Hey guys, so in today's video I'll be teaching you how I make this effect in Blender. So before we start, I would like to just give credit to two creators who I have learned this technique from. The first one being Midge, or also known as Mantisa, and the second one being Massimo. Before we can get into Blender, we first have to get the scan. So the way I go about it is by using my phone. There are a few apps that allow you to do this. Uh, the most well-known one is probably Polycam, but I prefer using another app called Scaniverse. The reason for it being Polycam only allows you to export a certain file type uh, unless you obviously pay. Whereas Scaniverse lets you export in way more different file formats. Okay, so I'm in Scaniverse. I opened large object slash area and I'm just scanning, trying to get rid of all of these uh, red and white lines. And when I'm done, I select detail and it's gonna scan in uh, much more detail, save, share, and you can export in all of these different formats. So after you've finished your scan, you want to save it. I prefer using the PLY files, but you can also save it as an OBJ or an FBX as well. For the purpose of this video, I'll be using a PLY file. The reason being, if you use PLY files, you'll also have to get an add-on. Um, there are two options that I found, one being the Point Cloud Visualizer, which basically does all the heavy lifting for you, um, but it does cost money, or a free alternative being uh, this GitHub page, which I will link in the description, where essentially it brings a new uh, importer to Blender, which allows you to import the PLY files as vertices. The explanation of how to install it is here, but I'll just go over it really quickly. So you wanna open where you installed Blender, and then open the Blender version that you're using, uh, 3.4 in my case, and then go to scripts, add-ons, and then scroll down and you'll see io underscore mesh underscore PLY. You open that and then from the download, you copy these two files over. Um, just to be safe, uh, before you copy them over, you should uh, make a copy of these two and name them as uh, old so that in case you wanna go back to the old importer, you can do so by just uh, deleting the old version. Okay, so now we are in Blender. Make sure you restart Blender after you install the add-on uh, and you will see this option here. You wanna click on it and then find a point cloud that you've saved onto your desktop from your phone. I'll just go for this one. Make sure you check verts slash colors only and then press import PLY as verts. Okay, so we've got the scan. Let's just delete the cube. Um, but as you can see, it doesn't render. Um, so what you want to do is go into uh, your render engine and change it to cycles. So now if you go into render view, nothing happens. We have to go modifier properties, add modifier, geometry nodes. Uh, press new, go over here, press geometry node editor. Now what you want to do is press shift A and then S, which will allow you to type the node that you want to use. First, we want to do mesh to points and attach it to the line here. And as you can see now, the points are being rendered. Let me just make it a little bit brighter so you can see. So the points are quite big. Um, and what I like to do now is add another node called set point radius. And from here, you can change how large you want the spheres to be. So I like it quite small. Um, you can also change it from this, but uh, the point cloud visualizer uses this setup for some reason. So that's just how I'll use it as well. So then I attach it to the group input, which allows me to change the radius from this tab here to whatever I like. So as you can see, there is no material. The way we fix this is by adding a set material. So what we wanna do now is go into shader editor, press new and we can delete this. So what we wanna do now is add a color attribute. So this is why we downloaded the add-on. The color attribute of this is here. So what this node does is it takes the color attribute add a gamma, set it to 2.2, connect it, and then also add a diffuse BSDF. 
Now, this is the sort of setup that the point cloud visualizer uses. So I'm just replicating what it does. Okay, so let's connect it and still nothing happens. That is because we need to go back into the geometry node editor and actually select the material um, that we just edited and boom. Now uh, we have color. So now here comes the fun part. Um, to animate, we want to add a noise noise texture and also a set position node now as you'll see if you attach the color to the offset it will be um, displacing uh, the point cloud but as you might notice it also sort of moves uh, the whole model so to fix that we want to add a vector math and set all of these numbers to minus 0.5 and now, as you see, it doesn't move the model when you apply the texture. Now you can obviously play around with um, the settings here to get your liking. But as you see, it's not being animated. So what you want to do is change from 3D to 4D, which will give you a W um, slider here. Basically, what that allows you to do is animate over time. So let's add a scene time and connect it to uh, the W, the seconds to the W. So essentially what this node does is it takes the length of the uh, timeline and it transforms the W accordingly. And now as I press play, you'll see that it is being animated. So to add a bit more control over the noise, you can add a another math node, a vector math node, and set this one to multiply. We don't want it to have three values. We want it to just have one. So what you can do is uh, drag this vector onto the group input and then go to this tab here. If you don't have it, just press N and it'll pop up. Press group and uh, select vector type and change it to float. So now if you go into uh, modifier properties, you'll see that vector is only one uh, table here so now if you play around you can change the basically the strength of the distortion to keep things organized you can change the name of these inputs to let's say distortion strength so now it'll be just easier for you to remember what um, each of these sliders do so now you have the basics of point cloud animation down now you can go into um, your scene and make it look more interesting so uh, for example, we can add a cube, scale it up to the size of the point cloud. Let me just go inside, go inside of the shader editor, make sure you have the cube selected. Add new, we can delete this principled and add a uh, volume instead. Plug the volume into the volume and decrease the density down to something small like 0 0.05 and um, let me just let me add a light here. Increase the size, increase the strength. Now you have a sort of foggy scene and obviously you can animate it as well. So if you want to animate the whole thing sort of twisting like you can see in my videos, you can add um, another modifier called simple deform and it has to be above your geometry node modifier and as you can see it's already affecting um the the point cloud so if you just play around with angle you can see it's already twisting and um you can play around with all these different settings to give different types of looks it's really really up to you but what I do is I actually give it an origin. So I'm just going to use this empty that I used uh, before. This will be the origin of the effect. So it's the middle of the, the effect, basically. So what I do is I start off with no um, twist. Let me just add a camera. Uh, okay. Let me zoom out. I like a pretty wide angle. Let's say we want to start somewhere here. 
So now what we do is come down to your timeline, press this auto keying button here. So what this does is whatever thing you change on a, the specific uh, frame, it will automatically put a keyframe there. So let's say um, we add a keyframe for the location of the camera here by just pressing I and then press location. So let's say we start at zero here and then let's move to 100 and we can just take control of the camera and move backwards something like this and it automatically places a keyframe so now if you go back the camera moves beautiful as you can see here if i play the camera now moves and then there's nice distortion happening so let's start the bend we can animate um go over here to angle place a keyframe at um frame zero and let's go to 100 where we want to end it let's just say oops yeah so uh this has to be above the geometry nodes here we go so now if we go back to zero press play the camera moves back and the twist is happening slowly here we go beautiful if you find that the sort of the noise is a little are going a little bit too fast you can go back into the geometry node editor where is it and as you see i've done here between the scene time and the w for the noise texture you can just add a um a math node set it to divide let's say divide a divide the seconds by two so it's going to be half of the time so as you see it's going much slower compared to here when it's going much faster and also this effect works with um, other noise textures as well so let's say um, Voronoi texture this one is quite fun let's just change this to 4d and all you have to do is just unplug this and plug the other texture in and now look at that that looks crazy and play around with the settings as well connect the w awesome when it comes down to actually rendering um you have a few options it comes down to your PC specs as well as where you're trying to render. So um, every project is different, but for this, I usually go for noise threshold of 0.1. I use the noise light paths. I like to just go to fast global illumination, um, motion blur. And for output properties, I like to keep it at 24 FPS. Um, 1080p uh, save it somewhere um, I like to use uh, PNG because if I have to uh, pause the render I can just um, stop it and it will just pick up from where it left off when I start it up again um, color depth that's up to you uh, compression I like to be at zero so to actually render you want to go to render and render animation and it will start rendering. I have one more thing that I'd like to show. This is a technique that I came up with um, by myself, so I'm sure that there's probably a quicker or a better way of doing it, but I will show you anyway. Let me just delete this again. So what I wanna show you guys is how you can add uh, noise only to a specific area of um, the point cloud. As you can see right now, everything is uh, being animated. But what if we just want to have a specific area of the point cloud that uh, is being animated? So how do we go about doing this? Well, you want to start with a capture attribute node between the uh, set material and set position. Change it from float to vector and add a uh, position node. 
connect it to the value. The setup here basically captures um, the point cloud's position. So what we want to do now is add a geometry proximity and change it from faces to points because we're working with point clouds. Connect the attribute to source position. Uh, so for the target, we want it to target an empty object. So I've just placed an empty sphere in the middle of this point cloud. And I want to grab the object info. So let's select empty and change uh, from original to relative. And now since um, the empty doesn't have any geometry, uh, since it's an empty, we want to add it. Uh, we want to give it some. So let's add a mesh line uh, and set the count to one. So it's just one line. Um, let's connect location to uh, start location and then mesh to target. So now it's only looking at the location around this empty object. So let's add a map range to basically filter or feather the area around the circle. So we've got to connect the distance to value. And um, these settings you can sort of play around with. What I like to do is uh, two max, I set it to zero and two min, I set it to 0 0.9. Uh, and I leave everything else as it is. And to uh, add some feathering, we can add a color ramp. Uh, touch it. Let's just put it somewhere here. Like so. Um, okay, so this is the setup basically. Um, but now what we want to do is uh, add noise to it. So right now it's still affecting the whole area because we have the noise only attached to the supposition. So what we want to do now is add another vector math, set it to multiply and link the color to the vector. And we link this multiply to vector here and to the offset. And now, as you can see, um, it's only affecting this area here. Let me just change the settings a little bit to make it more noticeable. Here you go. Everything else is not being animated, only this area. And this is just one of many different um, things that you can do with uh, geometry nodes and point clouds. I'm by no means an expert and I want to make it as accessible as possible for everyone else to also be able to um, do these really cool animations, which is why I have bundled everything together into an easy to understand uh, node group, which means that you don't even have to go into the geometry nodes to be able to um, animate. If you just look over here on this tab, every setting that is important for you should be just here. Um, so you can just play around with all of these settings and you can also make it so that it's proximity based as well. So I will leave a link in the description where you can purchase this uh, node group and it makes it so much easier. It's just plug and play. So if you don't want to mess around with geometry nodes, you can just uh, download this and it's really easy to set up and uh, you'll be making uh, point cloud animations in no time. If you have any questions or if you're unsure of something, just let me know in the comments and I'll uh, try to help you to the best of my ability. And um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, subscribe and see ya.